Welcome back. So we've been talking a lot about differential equations, x dot equals f of x, and I've been saying a lot, you know, this is a linear differential equation or a linear system of differential equations, and so I wanted to slow down and really give like a kind of quick overview of what it even means to be linear in the first place. So what is linear? Linearity is a huge, huge concept in math. It's a huge concept like you have linear algebra, matrices and vectors, you have linear differential equations. And it occurred to me, maybe some of you uh, kind of don't know or don't remember exactly definitionally what it means to be linear. And so I'm going to just give a really quick overview of what that means, uh, especially in the context of differential equations. So, um, you know, we're talking about a, for example, a linear ODE, a linear ordinary differential equation would be a differential equation like uh, x dot equals some matrix A times x, where let's say x is a vector of states, A is a matrix, and x dot is the first derivative of x with respect to time. So um, any differential equation system that can be written as x dot equals a matrix A times x uh, is in fact linear, that is a linear system of ordinary differential equations. Um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll start off, I'll, I'll revisit this in a minute, but I'm gonna start off by, by giving you a really simple example of um, something like x double dot plus uh, 3x dot plus 2x equals zero. We've looked at this differential equation before. I also claim that this is a linear differential equation. Uh, because essentially it's just, you know, x's and derivatives of x's and multiplication by numbers. There's no x squareds or sines of x's or cosines of x's. There's no nonlinear functions of x or x's derivatives in here. And so we know, um, we know that both, um, let's call it x1 of t equals e to the um, minus t and x2 of t equals e to the minus 2 of t. Both of these are solutions. Okay, you could uh, refresh yourself on this and remind yourself by, for example, computing the characteristic polynomial of this, lambda squared plus three lambda plus two equals zero, and the roots are lambda equals negative one and negative two, and so this gives the two fundamental solutions of this differential equation. And because this is linear, this is linear, because this differential equation is linear, any combination of these two solutions is also a solution of this differential equation. So that's a huge, huge benefit of linearity in our differential equations, is that if my differential equation is linear and I have two solutions, then I can add up those solutions and there's still a solution of this differential equation. So I actually wanna just, just confirm that is true. So let's say you know x of t equals any constant alpha e to the minus t plus any other constant beta e to the minus 2t is also a solution, specifically because this is a linear differential equation, so superposition holds. This is called uh, linear superposition. This is called linear superposition. It is super, uh, linear superposition. I'll give you some other examples of superposition in a minute, like you can add up different sine waves to build some function, that's what the Fourier transform does, again, relying on linear superposition. But I'm just gonna confirm that any, if, if these two are solutions, then any linear combination is also a solution. This is pretty easy to show. So we'll just compute, you know, x dot, equals minus alpha e to the minus t minus two beta e to the minus two t. X double dot equals uh, minus minus is plus alpha e to the minus t minus minus is plus four beta e to the minus uh, two t. And so now I can take these expressions and plug them into my differential equation here. It's pretty simple. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, maybe I'll do that in pink. And I'm going to add up, you know, x double dot plus 3x dot plus 2x. And I'm going to get, and I'm going to group all of my alpha terms and all of my beta terms. So all of my alpha terms, I'm going to get, you know, uh, alpha e to the minus t plus 3 times, you know, negative alpha e to the minus t plus two alpha e to the minus t, that's all of my alpha terms. Uh, 
And now I'm going to group all of my beta terms in this expression. So uh, x double dot is plus 4 beta e to the minus 2t uh, plus 3 times negative 2 is minus 6 beta e to the minus 2t plus 2x is plus 2 beta e to the minus 2t. And you can kind of already see that I have, you know, alpha minus 3 alpha plus 2 alpha. That's 0 alphas. So this equals 0. And if I have 4 betas minus 6 betas plus 2 betas, again, that's 4 minus 6 plus 2 is 0 betas. So both of these add up to zero, and this satisfies our differential equation. So this is really, really simple, and kind of I just hope that, that, that this convinces you that if I have two solutions of a linear differential equation, and I add those up in any combination alpha of the first solution plus beta of the second solution, when I plug that into my differential equation, because basically additivity, adding these functions, this is kind of linear point-wise in time, uh, when I plug, when I compute its derivatives and plug it into this differential equation, equation, I basically have all of the terms from the first alpha part of the equation. And of course, that solved the equation, so that equaled 0. And I also have all of the terms from the second solution, all of those beta terms. And of course, those add up to 0 because that was a solution. And so uh, adding them together is also a solution. So for a linear differential equation, if I have multiple solutions, I can add them up, and it's a still a solution. That's a huge, huge benefit and a huge property of linear differential equations, which allows us to solve these, these systems. OK, um, and in fact, that's what's allowing us to solve these matrix systems of equations. So for example, you know, we are oftentimes changing coordinates into eigenvector or eigenvalue coordinates. So I do something like I say, um, you know, z, what did I say? I said x equals t times z. So I say, um, you know, introduce a new coordinate system, x equals t, z, so that z dot equals a diagonal matrix times z. And what this means is that, uh, and these are matrix systems of equations, of course, in, if I have this matrix system of equations and I diagonalize it, so t are the eigenvectors of my A matrix, and I put this into a diagonal form in z coordinates, now each of those z's can be decoupled and I get a solution for the z1 component and the z2 component and the z3 and z4 and so on and so forth, and they're each decoupled little, you know, solutions. But then when I write down my full solution x at times t equals, um, t times e to the matrix dt times t inverse times x naught. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking all of those little um, independent solutions in z coordinates and I'm taking a linear combination of them to add up this solution x of t. So again, you can only do that, this kind of eigen decomposition based on linear algebra for these linear systems. This only works if linear superposition holds. Um, Good, and so of course you can do the same thing here. If I have two solutions uh, of this system, I can add those up and I still get a solution. That's, that's also true for these, these matrix systems of equations because um, essentially a matrix multiplication is a linear operation. So maybe that's something I want to, to show you now is just give you examples of what are linear operations. So what operations are linear. Before I do this, maybe I'll give you a counter example. So I've been talking about what is linear. I'll give you an example of something that's not linear. Okay, so uh, not linear would be something like the function f of x equals x squared. Okay, so if I take, you know, uh, f of x and that equals x squared, and I take f of y, and that equals y squared. If this was linear, then f of x plus y would equal f of x plus f of y. And that's not the case, so let's confirm. So f of x plus y is equal to x plus y squared, which equals x squared plus y squared plus 2xy. And this does not equal f of x plus f of y. So this is a good example of a function that is not linear. In fact, any, any 
function of x, like sine of x, cosine of x, x squared, log of x, root x, x cubed, anything that's not just x or 5x or, or something you know simple in x is going to be nonlinear. This function is nonlinear specifically because f of x plus y is not the sum of f of x plus f of y. There's this extra term here because of the nonlinearity. And so this is a good example of something that's not linear, a nonlinear function. And if I had x dot equals f of x, superposition would not hold in that differential equation. It would be really nasty. OK, things that are linear. Um, so, so linear means uh, f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y. Any linear function f satisfies this. And even more generally, it satisfies f of any number alpha x plus any number beta y equals alpha f of x plus beta f of y for any number numbers uh, alpha comma beta. Okay, so this is kind of the working definition of what it means for a function to be linear. A function is linear if this is true for any alpha and any beta. Uh, and so some really good examples of this are a derivative, um, the, the function, you know, f of x equals um, dx dt, that's a linear function. We can verify this because if we take um, ddt of any function alpha x plus beta y, let's say x is a function of t and y is a function of t, we know by the you know, just properties of the derivative that this equals, this constant can pop out of that derivative, this equals alpha dx dt plus beta dy dt. And so this equals alpha f of x plus beta f of y, where f means take the derivative with respect to time. Okay, so this is super useful. The derivative of x, x dot, is a linear operator on x. It's linear. x double dot is linear, x triple dot, x quadruple dot, any derivative of x with respect to time, if that's my function, that's a linear operator. And so you can verify that. Verify that if I did this for, if f of x was d squared x dt, that that would also be linear. It's pretty, pretty trivial. Um, so that's good. So derivatives are linear. Let's say that, um, you know, derivatives are linear. Uh, matrix multiplication is linear. Uh, I'm going to erase my nonlinear function here. So matrix multiplication is, is also linear. If I have, uh, you know, my function of x equals just a matrix A times x, that's also a linear function. Um, and I'll just write that out once I finish erasing this. Usually I speed this up, and now you can see that this is actually tedious to erase this board. Uh, good. So matrix multiplication. Uh, so if I have f of x, and let's say this is a vector x, if that equals some matrix A, times x, I claim that this is also a linear function or a linear operator on x. And so if I took uh, my A matrix times, uh, you know, some constant alpha uh, x, I can call this x1 or y, it doesn't matter, let's call it x1, plus some beta constant times a vector x2. We know, again, by matrix multiplication, um, if I take, you can actually, if you really wanted to, you could actually build your matrix A, and you could literally build a vector that is, you know, alpha x11 plus beta x21, alpha x12, the second component of x, plus beta x22, and so on and so forth. And you could actually go through and do the multiplication of this vector, and you'll see that this will split into a constant alpha times a x1 plus a constant beta times a 
X2. That might actually be a really good exercise for you is to like pause here and actually take this, write this vector out, multiply it by an arbitrary A matrix, A11, A12, A1, three, A21, A22, A23, an arbitrary A matrix, and convince yourself that it actually splits this way so that yes, in fact, it is linear. This is a linear operator. And that's why if I have two solutions, any linear combination of those solutions is also a solution. So really, really, really important, I'm gonna erase this because it's right where I wanna be standing. Uh, really, really important to note is that functions, so, so this is just a generic definition of what it means to be a linear function. It means that this superposition holds. Uh, if I have f of x plus f, you know, plus y, it equals f of x plus f of y. That is true for any linear function. And what's really, really useful is linear ordinary differential equations, which, which means differential equations that only have you know, derivatives and linear operators of x. Linear superposition holds. So if I have multiple solutions, then I can add those solutions up in any proportion I want, and those will still be a solution of my differential equation. And so again, you know, derivatives, any amount of derivatives I take of x, that's a linear operator. Matrix multiplication, that's a linear operator. So this is, in fact, a linear differential equation. If I had weird exotic things, like if I had some fractional derivative, there are derivative, fractional derivatives. You can take the, the one-half derivative of x with respect to t to the one-half. That does exist. That's called a fractional derivative. Um, that might mess up my linearity. Okay? Um, if I took you know, a times x cubed, that would mess up my linearity, and linear superposition generically would not hold. So we kind of are massively relying on linear superposition to take these systems and break them down into smaller subproblems. Like in this system, uh, I broke it down into these two fundamental solutions, which I can then add up. In this system, I break it down into its kind of eigenvalue, its diagonal eigenvalue system, which has a bunch of different decoupled solutions, and then I recombine those. That all uses linear superposition based on the fact that these differential equations themselves are linear linear built out of linear operators like the derivative and matrix multiplication. Okay, so when I say this system is linear, I hope you now know what I mean, and it's a big deal. Linearity, pretty much most of the math we can actually solve in closed form with generic solution techniques are for linear systems. Linear algebra is a subset of this massive field of abstract algebra, and linear algebra are some of the only problems we can solve in closed form uh, using matrices and vectors. Similarly, linear differential equations are a tiny, tiny subset of all of differential equations, but these are the only ones that we have kind of a one-size-fits-all solution technique, you know, and namely computing the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this A matrix, and then, you know, taking this special combination of those solutions to get the full solution of X. So neat stuff. Uh, I just wanted to slow down and really make sure you have a gut feeling of what it means to be linear. Uh, derivatives are linear. Operators, matrix multiplication is linear. What does linear superposition mean? Um, and linear superposition is going to come up all over the place. When we talk about partial differential equations, which we're going to solve with Fourier transforms and Laplace transforms, we're also going to use linear superposition. In fact, the Fourier transform is another linear operator. Um, the singular value decomposition is a linear operator. The Laplace transform is a linear operator. Um, you know, and there's a reason that, that most of our engineering math focuses on these linear operators, because those are almost the only ones that we can uh, generically write down in closed form and because superposition holds for, for those linear operators. So we like to work with them. Okay, that's kind of everything I wanted to show you. And again, we're really focusing on these differential equations and linear ODEs are easier to solve because linear superposition holds. All right, thank you.